Some terrain pieces aren't very exciting, but you just need them at the game table. Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith, and in this episode, we're going to be making sea bottom tiles. Now, most of the concepts that we're covering in this video have already been explored in other water terrain videos, so I won't bore you by going through them over and over and over again. Nonetheless, I hope what you see today is valuable and inspirational. We're going to start our build with these artist canvas boards. These are the same 11 by 14 inch or 28 by 35 centimeter cotton canvas boards that we've been using all along. I couldn't ask for a better painting surface than the cotton canvas, and its porous nature will be helpful to glue features to it. Next, I'm going to choose the materials to build our rocky features out of. I really like the cork I found in large sheets at the dollar store. The edges of the cork are easy to shape and produce a great texture. I really like working with foam board too, which is also from the dollar store. We can use a hobby knife to shape the board to our needs. We could also use double corrugated cardboard, which is very easy to find. We can also cut the cardboard to the shapes we want without a lot of fuss. I think I'm going to settle on using the cork. I'm going to be making two sea bottom tiles, and I want to plan where I'm going to build up our surface features. I want some layered rocky formations and I can identify those by numbering the layers I want to build up. I don't want the shapes to be too big, nor do I want them to be higher than three layers of cork. The largest feature of this tile is going to be a fissure here in the corner. I'll plan out the highest layer first, then add the lower level. I'll also add a few final rocky shapes around the board. I stepped away from my board for about 10 minutes and now it's time to take a second sober look. I think I've cluttered this tile up too much. As a result, I think I'm going to remove some of these planned rocky formations. Also, I think I'm going to combine some of these designs into a single shape. Every time I work with cork, I always save the fragments and the smaller pieces I don't use. Now we can use them to build up our terrain features. And we can also use these larger pieces as well. We can start building up our planned features by shaping our cork. We want to layer the cork in interesting patterns. However, I don't want to layer the cork more than three layers tall. My thought process here is that if I keep the formations low, they'll be less prone to breaking. I can transport them more easily, and the tile won't have a diorama-like appearance. By that I mean I want the tile to be functional and nice to look at, but not the focal point on the table. What I really want to do is build up the cork formations into pillars and cavernous openings, archways, and even large step formations. But if I do that, the board will be the focus and not what I put on it. All the tall shapes could more easily break and it'll reduce the playing surface. Next, we need to mix some black and dark gray paint with some matte Mod Podge. We want the resulting color to match the same dark gray we've been using in our aquatic accessories videos. We want a heavy layer of our Mod Podge mixture on our cork pieces. The glue in the Mod Podge will reinforce all of the crumbly edges of the cork. If you know you're going to be using the same color on a number of builds, I suggest mixing a large volume of the paint and Mod Podge. This will save you the aggravation of trying to match the colors later on. It won't save you from any problems that arise from your base coat or materials being a different color. Check out our Foundations video on base coats and priming for more information on that. Next, while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'll add some decorative sand in order to create a texture on the flat surfaces. Make sure you get the sand down into the cracks and crevices too. Then we repeat the process until we've covered all our cork formations. A few hours later and we'll add a second layer of our Mod Podge mixture. I really want to make sure that our palette matches that of our aquatic scatter terrain. After all, the point of the sea bottom tile is to decorate it with much smaller terrain pieces, and I want the colors to look consistent. Next, we want to mix our sand to cover the sea bottom. Just like we did for our beach tiles video, we'll want to mix some PVA glue and tan decorative sand. We have a small amount of sand left over from our rocky shorelines video over three months ago. Now the goal for this mixture is not to create a semi-fluid texture like we did with the beach tiles. We wanted the sand on the beach tiles to be smooth, in order to simulate the waves flattening out the beach. For the sea bottom tiles, however, 
We want our sand layer to be coarse and thick. To achieve this, we add less water to our mixture. Next, I suggest you use a tray of some kind to minimize your mess. This large sandwich tray will do the trick. Now on top of that, I recommend another object to raise your seabed tile off the tray below. When we add our sand and glue mixture to the canvas tile, gravity will pull the mixture over the edge. If we left the tile on a flat surface, we run the risk of gluing the tile to that surface. I suggest you wear gloves of some kind. The glue and the sand create quite the mess. Also, you're likely to use your fingers to move and shape the sand. Now we add the sand mixture to the canvas board in a thin layer. I suggest you work around the edges first, so if you tilt the board up, you won't risk smoothing out the textures in the middle. I also recommend that you work in small areas one at a time. You can use a small stick in your fingers in order to get the coarse material right up to the edge of the cork formations. The sand layer should be thin enough in order to hide the canvas and not splash over the first layer of cork. Don't be afraid to thin out your layers of sand. The working time of the mixture is well over 30 minutes, so you can reshape and spread the sand around in order to cover any gaps. Also, don't worry about any little splashes of sand on the rock formations. You can always chip them off after they've dried. Now that we're down to the last corner, I wanted to note that I'm not going to be adding any decorative accents to these tiles. My thought here is I want to be able to use the board as a beach tile after the tide has gone out, or as a sandy grotto in a cave, or an island inlet. 24 hours later, our board is dry and rock solid. Our sandy sea bottom textures have kept their coarse shapes. However, the coarse sand mixture wasn't very fluid and not much spilled over the edges of our canvas board. On the back of the board, some of the mixture is hardened, but that should be easy to remove. Next, I want to deal with the exposed canvas board. Next, we need to mix some tan and white paint together in order to match the sand color. When we compare the tan of the paint to the sand, the paint is a few shades darker. We can create our own hue to match the sand by mixing the tan and the white in this little plastic miniatures package. You can mix the colors together bit by bit until we get the hue that is one or two shades darker than the sand. Now because of the camera lights and all the white in the shot, the mixture actually looks lighter than it really is. I'll try out a test spot on the back of the tile and I think this color will work. Now all we have to do is paint around the exposed edge. The reason why I want this paint to be slightly darker than an exact match to the sand is because we're painting it on a white surface. That base color will brighten our tan mixture after it dries, so if the sand and the paint were the same tint when they were wet, they would be different after the paint dries. The human eye can differentiate around 7 million hues, tints and shades, and it takes a lot of practice to notice the subtle differences. After we're finished, I still have quite a bit of this tan mixture left over. Not one to waste, I'll just put the container in a Ziploc bag, squish as much air out as I can, and seal it up for later use. Here's a close-up of the paint after it's dried. To my eye, these tones are very close, but on camera the paint is slightly brighter than the sand. Either way, it's more than close enough for table use. For the final step, we're going to dry brush our rocky terrain. We want to use the same turquoise that we've used in our water accessories videos. We also want to use a brush with a small toe so that we can minimize the cleanup on our sandy layer. As with any dry brush, we want very little paint on our bristles and we want to remove the excess on a napkin. We then paint only on the highest surface features of our rocky terrain. Please check out our foundations video on dry brushing for a more detailed description. Here's our completed sea bottom tiles. The edges are solid, all painted and completed, and the texture of the sand is rugged and bumpy. I like that we can change how our boards are arranged in order to suit our needs at the table. We can also use these sea bottom tiles with our other tiles in order to create a very long beach after the tide is out. Sea bottom tiles may not be an exciting idea by themselves, but when combined with other aquatic scattered terrain, they can become a vibrant and dynamic environment. Even though we may have worked with these materials and techniques before, I hope this video was inspirational fuel for your imagination engine. I also want to give a shout out to Joe Spears and Lee Shepard for all their support on Patreon. Thanks very much. We really appreciate your continued support of The Gamesmith. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at The Gamesmith, please hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. 
You might also check out our blog at thegamesmith.org. We post the building materials for all our crafts on our website too. You might also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.